Just a quick one today. So this here is a little amplifier, headphone amp I designed. So basically this circuit board here, this was what was originally in this amp. This is a Monocore SA50. It was originally a little amp with like TDA 2050s or something in it. So there was two of them mounted on the heat sink. So I took the board apart, measured it up, <clears throat> created the foot pads for some of the custom parts like the AC adapter and the headphone socket. Designed a new board to go in there. Here's the circuit, a few mistakes in it. For instance, this is connected to the wrong point. That gave me a headache when I was trying to powering it up as it just kept latching up to the output. Um, few tweaks, but the biggest one I had, aside from an annoying earth loop from a mistake I'd made, um, so yeah, so the wires here are the bodge wires which disconnect this from here and connect it to there where it should connect. Um, LM358s. Now, I just went with LM358s because it's a single rail design. Um, there's some tweaks to other stuff as well. Uh, single rail design. Uh, these are designed for single rail supplies, not that any op amp really... <sighs> The op amp just sees the voltage between these two points. Any point you can, you know, you you put on its inputs, it just sees these voltages reference to these points. So technically there's no such thing as a single rail op amp, but these are very much sold as single rail op amps. Now, so ironed out the other kinks in the circuit, sorted out the annoying zero V loop, plugged a set of 250 ohm headphones in, ever such quiet hiss in the background, start cranking the volume up, distorting like hell, Put it on my oscilloscope, and for some reason, I'm just getting almost no negative signal at all. It turns out LM358s can source up to like 40 milliamps of current, but they can hardly sync any at all. So, pulling some 2200 ohm resistors to 0V sorted that out. All seems to be working good until I plugged a set of Sennheiser, like 18 ohm headphones or something in. The noise from this thing was unbelievable. Hissing like crazy. Drove you nuts. And you could tell like, as you adjusted the um, treble control. You could sort of hear it get really noisy and quiet. And so I'm thinking, well, the noise has got to be coming from this op amp and this one. So obviously as you adjust the treble control up, you're giving it more signal from this point. So more noise is coming through. And as you adjust it down, not only are you attenuating the signal from this op amp, you're allowing this op amp to run it a great amount of negative feedback quite in itself down. So I was adamant it was in the op amps. I had a look on this board, and luckily enough, this had some 4558s on. They're nothing special in terms of op amps, but they work. Just got the soldering iron, the hot air gun out, undid the second one, which is the, I think is this one here. Put the 4558 in, incredible difference already. Tons less noise, but still some. Pulled the second one out, put it in, whisper quiet. And it's also meant I've been able to remove the bod resistors I had in across the op amps, which we needed to pull them to 0V. So the lesson there is, do not use LM358s. Yes, their one advantage is they can go right down to 0V. That was why I used them. I just thought I lack an idea of an op amp that can swing equally both ways. Not that it'll ever really go that low. It's got an 18 volt supply and it's biased at 9 volts. So realistically, it'll never get near that. They are noisy as hell and they have almost no ability to sync current. Um, so yeah, just avoid them. But this, on the other hand, total success now. Oh, well, almost. <laughs> See, it says bass and treble on the front of it. I um, was very tired when I finished this schematic off. The problem I did here was I just drew the schematic out like I was drawing it out on a circuit simulator. Um, and I only really drew it out originally as in KiCad as basically the circuit. Uh, I then assigned parts values to stuff. I didn't realize that I'd signed RT2 as treble and RT1 as bass. Well, RB1 and R, so RT I called treble, RB I called bass. Um, I accidentally put these in the wrong places on the circuit board. So the one that says bass is actually treble and the one that says treble is actually bass. And then 
of course, as I've been drawing it out, if you notice, I've done the usual, I've just rotated it and I've not thought about the fact that the pins are reversed. So the base, not only is the uh, base control where the treble is and the treble where the base is, but in order to turn the base up, you turn the control down. In order to turn the base down, you turn the control up. I got another one of these I'm going to build. So all I'm going to do is on the base control is I'm just going to literally spin it round and point to point wire it down to the circuit board. That will solve that problem. I'll do it on both the controls actually, so I can at least put the treble where the treble should be in the base where the base can should be. Um, this happens. I can assure you, there's no end of even stuff that's managed to get to full production phase. I've worked on where you see random little bodge wires and stuff put in where you can clearly see cut tracks and stuff where it just happens. It's, it happens. It's one of those. If I was going to make a revision two of this board. It's the things that, you know, it's revision one board. Revision one boards always have errors in them. It's just the way it happens. So, um, but yeah, anyway, that's that. So, yeah, this video was just a quick one on never use an LM358. They're shite. So, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.